Belco, the Metropolitan Vickers Diesel was away to the harbor to meet Edward. Bill and Ben are tank engine twins, and they love playing tricks on the other engines. One day, Thomas was at the big station talking to the fat controller about Bill and Ben. Bill and Ben have gone too far, said Thomas. They've been playing tricks all day. The fat controller pondered. You're right, Thomas, said the fat controller. I shall speak to them later. At the harbour, Boko met up with Edward. I hope those trucks aren't being troublesome, said Edward. They're all right, said Boko. Good luck, Boko, peeked Edward, and Boko oiled away. Back at the clay pits, Bill and Ben were arguing about who should go first. It's your turn, Ben, grumbled Bill. No, it's your turn, Bill, shouted Ben. Ben was so cross that he accidentally bumped a truck and derailed it. Apparently, Boko arrived with the fat controller. They were both cross. Bill and Ben, he snapped. What is all this mess? Um, Bill was, um, I was, um, stammered Ben. You're both to blame, snapped the fat controller. I need you to clean up this mess with Boko and Edward right away. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, said the twins, and they puffed away. Later, Boko and Edward helped Bill and Ben clean up the mess. Don't mind Bill and Ben, said Boko. They'll get used to it, smiled Edward. No, I won't, Boko, he said. And Edward puffed away to collect his train. doesn't sound well at all. He tried and tried, but he cannot get the whistle to peep the way it should. The fat controller heard all the noise. Thomas, an engine on my railway should not sound like that. Please see the workman and have that whistle fixed. The idea of visiting the works worries Thomas a little. He has not been into the works before, but like a useful engine, he starts off to the works. Thomas doesn't get very far before he finds Percy. He had come off the rails. Can you help me, Thomas? asked Percy. I'm feeling a little stuck. Thomas coupled up and pulled Percy back onto the tracks.
Thank you, Thomas, exclaimed Percy with a whistle. Being back on the rails feels great. Thomas tried to whistle back. Sounds like you should have your whistle fixed, Thomas, said Percy. Thomas remembered he must visit to the works and felt worried again. I know, said Thomas. I'm on my way right now. Just ahead, Bertie sat with a cloud of steam coming from his hood. Thomas whistles a hello. Oh, Thomas, am I glad to see you, said Bertie. Although you sound as bad as I feel, I'm overheated and unable to get started. Thomas's driver offered some of Thomas's water to refill Bertie's radiator. Bertie is very thankful. Thomas lets out a silly sounding goodbye toot on his whistle as he began again. Along the way, Thomas came upon Henry. I'll bet Henry needs some help to gain the flying kipper over Gordon's Hill, thought Thomas. Thomas tried to get Henry's attention, but Henry couldn't hear Thomas's broken whistle. Finally, Henry heard. You look like you could use a hand, said Thomas. I would appreciate some help, said Henry. Would you give me a push? Thomas got behind the brake fan and began to push. Both engines working together, Henry was soon at the top of the hill. Thank you, Thomas, to the Henry as he began downhill. For a little engine with not much of a whistle, you certainly are a big help. Thomas is moving past the quarry when he saw Harold at Toy Wreck. Thomas, come quickly! I've spotted a broken bridge on the line, and I need your help to fix it! Thomas is glad for an important job to do and was happy to put his visit off to the works. He hurried with Harold to get supplies and workmen to fix the bridge. Just as soon as the job was done, Thomas took off to the works. Thomas wondered if fixing his whistle was going to hurt. The workman saw that Thomas is a little afraid. Well, Thomas, smiled the workman, the fat controller says you were coming today. Let's have a look at that broken whistle of yours. The workman looked at Thomas's whistle, and Thomas is still a bit worried. So he asked, will it hurt to fix my whistle? The workman laughed. Not only it won't hurt, but it didn't hurt. Your whistle is fixed already, and you didn't even feel a thing. See? Give it a try. Thomas peeps his whistle out loud. He is so happy to have his old strong peep peep back. He lets out another happy whistle. Thomas returned to the sheds. The fat controller told Thomas, I'm pleased that you got your whistle fixed. A really useful engine like you, Thomas, should never sound so silly. I really was a silly little engine to have put off visiting the works like I did, admitted Thomas. I shouldn't have been so afraid. He was only going to help me, just like you helped me and all the others today, Thomas, as he added. That's right, Thomas, said the fat controller.
stuffed with the great western engine, Puff sat there to Kronk Station. Edward was there. He could see that Duck was sad. It's not fair, said Duck. Everyone has important jobs to do except me, and all I do is run the branch line. Edward smiled. I hope you can find an important job for you, Duck, he said, and he puffed away. Poor Duck began to cry. Later that day, Duck had to take some trucks to Math. He didn't like that one bit. The trucks would be very troublesome indeed. At last, Duck arrived at Marin. He didn't want to pull trucks ever again. Meanwhile, Donald had an accident in a signal box earlier, so the Fat Controller had asked Duck to work with Douglas while Donald is at the works. Oh, thank you, sir, peeped Duck. Duck didn't mind all the hard work. But Douglas was already missing Donald. I miss Donald, he thought. At the end of the day, Duck got a big surprise. There was Donald with his twin Douglas. Donald was having his tent repaired. Duck was thrilled to see Donald back. Welcome back, Donald, said Duck. Thank you, Duck, replied Donald. I missed you, said Douglas. I missed you too, replied Donald. And Duck got the biggest surprise he's ever had. Baking hot day on the island of Sodor. Thomas arrived at the top station with Annie and Clarabelle. He loved his branch line. But sometimes he has to take trucks from the quarry to the harbor. One day, Thomas was on his branch line when he saw a broken piece of track up ahead. Careful, Thomas, said his driver, but it was too late. Thomas hit the broken track as he came off the rails. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. I'm off! And he was. Luckily, Annie and Clarabelle were still on the rails, but Thomas just sulked. As his branch line was being repaired, Thomas was sent to the big station to help Edward in the yard, while Bertie took over his pasture run. Thomas hated it. He just wanted his branch line back. That night, Thomas was still thinking about his branch line. Edward felt sorry for Thomas and asked him kindly. What's wrong, Thomas? asked Edward. I miss my branch line, sobbed Thomas. 
Well, the Fat Controller will tell you if your branch line is being repaired, said Edward. Thomas just looked at his buffers. The next morning, Thomas went to the big station to see the Fat Controller. Good news, Thomas, said the Fat Controller. The tracks have been finally repaired. You can go back to your branch line now. Thomas was so excited, it nearly made his boiler burst. Oh, thank you, sir, he peeped. He couldn't wait to go back to his branch line again. Thomas was so happy to have his branch line back. Annie and Clara were happy to have Thomas back too. And Thomas was a really useful engine ever since. One morning, the Fat Controller came to see Donald and Douglas. He had an important job to give to them. There's a heavy goods train waiting at the harbor, he said. I need you both of you to go and collect it. Yes, sir, said the twins, and they puffed away. At the harbor, Donald and Douglas couldn't believe their eyes. Their goods train was 20 troublesome trucks. The Fat Controller has asked me to pull the train, said Donald. No, it will be me, grumbled Douglas. It's me, it's me. Fine, snapped Donald. I'll pull this train all on my own. And he fussed away, leaving a very cross Douglas behind. Meanwhile, Donald was taking his goods train to Marin when he passed James at Ellsbridge. James was very surprised to see Donald without his twin. Donald, called James. Where's Douglas? But Donald didn't listen. He was too far away to hear James. Let's just hope he doesn't get into trouble, says driver. Donald was having a fun time with his goods train. He forgot to mind his speed on the main line. Whoa, slow down, Donald, called his driver. But Donald wasn't listening. He has to get to Marin on time. At Titmouth, Douglas was telling Thomas about Donald. Donald won't share his trucks with me said Douglas. He's just being selfish. I'm sure you'll get along with your twin soon, Douglas, said Thomas softly. I guess so, Thomas, said Douglas, and he puffed sadly away. <laughs> Meanwhile, after leaving some trucks on the siding, Donald went up Gordon's Hill. I can do it! I can do it! puffed Donald. At last he reached the top of the hill. But the trucks are being very troublesome. Oh, oh, oh! They laughed and they pushed Donald down the hill. 
Donald tried to stop the runaway trucks, but he couldn't. You're six! cried Donald. His driver put on the brakes, and they stopped just in time. Donald was relieved to have stopped, but the troublesome trucks laughed. Back at the sheds, the Fat Controller spoke severely to Donald. I'm very disappointed in you, Donald, he boomed. You know full well you should have shared heavy goods trains with the other engines. Just be lucky you haven't caused an accident. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir, said Donald sadly. The next day, Donald shared his goods train with Douglas, and they had a great time. But I think Donald learned his lesson, don't you?